trust in your name, Jesus. Able to save and deliver us. We put our hope in your name, Jesus. Sing bless you.
us worship you, Father God. Yeah. Praise you in this place, Jesus. Satisfy the love I need. 
if that's for the Lord, can we do it again? Can we give him glory and honor? You know, yesterday, after my son did his, uh, his chores, after he cleaned his room and he had his PlayStation time, and after he went down his checklist, I said, hey, you could use your PlayStation 5 now. And after he played for hours and hours and hours without interruption, the, the end of the, of the night came and he went up to bed. And I was downstairs and I, I said, I, I gotta go up to his room. And I went into his room and I said, hey, could you read this with me? And we opened up the scriptures and we read the parable of the wise man and of the foolish man is in Matthew chapter 7 of the wise builder and the foolish builder and I said can you tell me something about this and he, said, he gave me his input and after I was done with him I left and I, I kept on reading and the wise man the Bible says that he built upon the rock and the foolish man built upon the sand there were two men that were gifted there were two men that were called and they were very skilled but one of them took their time building a, a solid foundation and another one just kept running through and the Lord said hey your foundation ain't ministry I'm your foundation I don't know who this is for but you know you know sometimes sometimes we building and we building fast and you know what the parable says it says that they both build one on the rock and one on the sand they were both skilled builders but you know what else they had in common that the storm was gonna hit both houses you see it doesn't matter if you're a skilled builder if you're building on the rock or you're building on the sand guess what the storm is gonna come for the house that's on the rock and on the sand and I stood watching and the Lord kept telling me hey build slowly George oh man you know, you got to take your time building. Sometimes you have to pause, you have to analyze, you have to self-evaluate so you can build perfect, so you can build correctly. Because when that storm comes, and Jesus said, the foolish man built upon the sand. And when that storm came, it swept that house right off the rock, off the sand. I don't know who this is for. Build slow. Take your time building. Ministry is not your foundation. Your foundation is the love of Jesus. Your foundation is how much time do you spend on your word and how much time you spend in prayer. That's where the solid foundation is built. It's not built upon good works. It's built upon the presence of the almighty God. Can the church say amen? You may be seated, church. The Lord is good. It's a beautiful morning. And the presence of the Lord is in the house. Are there any visitors here this morning? Can you raise your hand? Any visitors? We, I know we have uh, Pastor Betzali's family. Welcome. Welcome to the house of the Lord this morning. I know we have Pastor Marilyn and Pastor Tony's family here. Welcome. Welcome. Receive greetings on behalf of our church uh, leadership and our, our senior pastors. It's a beautiful morning. A beautiful morning. Today is the day of salvation still. Today is the day of reconciliation still. It's a beautiful morning, but the Lord wants to do a good work today. How many say amen? Let's ask our ushers to come forth in the same spirit of worship as we get ready to collect the offering this morning. Hallelujah. You guys are awfully quiet this morning. It's a beautiful Sunday. The weather is nice. Spring is here. It's upon us, right? Let's, uh, let's rise one more time as we get ready to pray for the offering. Father Lord, we give you the most high honor and worship this morning. We thank you for who you are, Father God. We pray, Father Lord, for the cheerful giver this morning, and we pray for those that might not be able to give, Father Lord, that you may bless them as well, that you may open doors, Father Lord. We know, Father Lord, you are the provider. We bless your offering this morning in Jesus' mighty name. And the church says, you may come forth this morning.
love Jesus, can you give him a hand clap and tell him, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The best thing that this world has is Jesus. It's wonderful to be able to say that we live for him, that our lives are in his hands. It's wonderful to be able to say that he is, he is our Lord and our Savior, that we've rendered our lives to him, we've rendered our souls to him, and we've rendered our lives to him, that we live for him. If you're here today and, and you're struggling in your faith and you feel like you're far from God, that today would be the day of reconciliation for you, that today would be the day where you say, you know, I need to get right with God. I need to draw closer to God. He's not looking for someone who's perfect. He's looking for someone who's willing. And each and every one of us here, we're, we're all beggars that have found bread. No one is perfect. No one is righteous without Christ. Each and every one of us found a time and a place in our lives when we have said, Jesus, I need you. And his grace and his mercy reached us that day. If that's you, can you say amen? Hallelujah. It's a special Sunday for us. Um, it's a Sunday where we're going to be adding um, to our pastoral staff. We're going to be adding a young adult pastor. And we're also going to be affirming a pastor uh, in, our, in our church board. And we're thankful for what God has done, for what he's doing, and for what he's going to do. How many believe that God still has more? He has more for us as individuals, as a family, as a church. The Lord has more for us. And the church says, man. So I'd like to bring a reflection this morning. And after the reflection, uh, we're going to enter into the ceremony of anointing our pastors. We want to just greet those who are joining us via um, YouTube or Facebook, our social media platforms. God bless you. God keep you. We pray that you're well. If you're, if you're sick, we pray healing for you. If you're discouraged, we pray encouragement for you this morning. And we pray that you are enjoying the service as much as we are here as well. Uh, we greet uh, some friends that are here. Uh, Elohimers, once an Elohimer, always an Elohimer. Right, Joey and Jamari, once an Elohimer, always an Elohimer, right? Um, so happy to have Perla here with us as well, as well, Perla. And Pastor Naomi Cuevas, God bless you. So nice to have you here with us. Chavez, Pastor Naomi Chavez. Thank you. Um, I want to say yesterday we had an incredible event here. We had over 200 teen girls that came to worship Jesus, and they were challenged by a great word. Um, we honor Sister Judy, Caitlin, Brianna, Christy, the whole team that served. You guys did amazing. The Amhat moms that served, you guys did amazing. And Pastor Naomi came from California to come and encourage our girls, and she did an amazing job, and she's here with us today, and she's actually speaking in the Spanish service and also encouraging our leadership this afternoon, so we're like squeezing the juice out of her while she's here. Um, you may stay seated. Would you open up your Bibles to Acts chapter 13? Acts chapter 13, verses 1, 2, and 3. Acts chapter 13, verses 1, 2, and 3, and we've entitled... Um, our reflection today, a heavenly call, a heavenly call. Acts chapter 13, verses 1, 2, and 3. A heavenly call. We read God's word. Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manani, who had been brought up from Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. And while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. A heavenly call. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word, for it is a light, uh, and it's, it's a light unto our feet, a lamp unto our path. It leads us, it guides us. Thank you, Lord, for your word that speaks into our hearts, that confronts us. We thank you, Lord, for the teaching of your word, Lord God, that guides us into your perfect will, Lord. Father, I pray that your word would land in our hearts this morning, that it would uh, uh, confront us, Lord, that it would wake something up within us and draw us closer to you, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. 
a heavenly call. From the moment that we give our lives to Christ, something happens within us. We become, we become people with a purpose. The moment that we ask Jesus into our lives, something begins to transform within us and we become people with purpose. There is a God-ordained call that is put upon our lives at that very moment. Our lives, our lives are designed to make an impact. If you've given your life to Christ, your life is designed at that moment to make an impact. Many ask, what does that look like? What does a heavenly call upon our lives look like? Well, there are, there, there's a general call for the church, right? The Apostle Paul says that we are Christ's ambassadors, and we've been given the ministry of reconciliation. That, that is the call upon the church. We are ambassadors of Christ, and, and we have a charge, a call uh, that comes from the Lord to draw people to God, to their Father. We also have the call to bear the fruit of the Spirit, to resemble in our daily lives a life that represents Christ well on this earth, to be peacemakers, that's our call, to be kind, to be generous is our heavenly call, and it is a call not to be taken lightly. We are also called to a holy life, a life of consecration, one that is intentional in keeping itself away from habitual sin so that we would not become slaves to this sinful nature. That is the call of the church and one to be taken seriously. We are called to serve. We're called to help those that have need. We're called to stand for what is right, to stand for what is just. We're called for this, and it is a heavenly call and one that needs to be taken seriously. God has also called us or placed assignments in our lives, right? Assignments to be preachers and pastors and evangelists and missionaries, to lead people in worship and to become teachers, right? To serve in particular ministries like, like ushering and security and hospitality and, uh, and children's ministry, right? And missions, we're, we're called. Those are assignments in our lives that, that assignments change. They're seasonal, um, they, they move with our gifting, and sometimes they're more sacrificial, but the Lord places us in those times, in those places, to serve his kingdom. We see here that in the New Testament church, it's a new season of growth. In Acts chapter 13, the church here is intentional in reaching the Greeks, the Gentiles. Before this season, much attention was given to Jerusalem and the Hebrew people. But now, the fulfillment of God's word continues to be seen, and the gospel is being preached to all nations. This is what Jesus told the disciples in Matthew chapter 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. Therefore, go, go and make disciples of all nations. And here in Acts chapter 13, we see Barnabas and Saul, Paul, Paul, his Greek name. Uh, they are being sent out to reach the Greeks, the Gentiles. Here in a prayer service, we see that uh, these disciples have come together. These leaders have come together. And the Holy Spirit speaks and says, separate Paul and Barnabas for the work that I have called them. It was a particular assignment for them. Uh, they were to be missionaries to the Gentiles, planting churches throughout Asia Minor, it was a heavenly call. Today, we're anointing Betsy Colón and Marilyn Miranda officially into the pastoral ministry. It's an assignment that comes from the Lord for your lives today. It is a heavenly call. It's a heavenly call. One to be taken seriously. An assignment for their lives today. To the church that you're here today, I hope to encourage you to embrace all that God is doing in you. To those who are visiting us here today, I, I hope to awaken a reality that your encounter with Jesus places purpose in your life and that God also has a heavenly call for you. I hope that you would leave here this morning, that the word would resonate with you to know that God's purpose has been intentional with your life, and he has placed a heavenly call upon you. And the church says, Amen. there's four observations that I'd like to share with you this morning with regard to Acts chapter 13, verses 1 through 3. The first one is, the call comes from God. 
The call comes from God. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, God speak, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. It was a prophetic word over their lives informing them that this call came from the Lord. It wasn't their gifting. It wasn't who they knew. Uh, it was the Lord that had called them. It was the Lord that had given them this new assignment. Bethany and Marilyn, this, this day I remind you, it's the Lord that calls you. Be encouraged with these words. It's a heavenly call. To those who are here today, you feel the tugging in your heart. You feel that God is speaking to you and dealing with you. I want to remind you this morning, it is the Lord uh, who calls you. And you may ask, well, what qualifies me for this call? Only the grace of God qualifies you for this call. We're not qualified for the call because of our gifting. We're not qualified for the call because of our friends or our family. You're not qualified because your, past, your father or your mother was a pastor. You're not qualified for the call because you have great education. No, what qualifies you is God's grace and God's mercy. God's favor. I love that when Timothy was in a low time in his life, a low time, and he needed encouragement in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 9. I love this verse. It's marked my life, and it's marked my heart. And this is what Paul tells Timothy to encourage him. He tells him, he saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. Isn't that awesome to be reminded? It's not anything that we have done. It's not how gifted you are or how good looking you are. It's simply by the grace of God and for the purpose of God. We're just instruments in his hands that he uses at his time. We're just tools in his hands that he uses at his time, in his location, and for his perfect will. Just because, just because the call comes from God, it doesn't mean that it'll be an easy call. You know, sometimes you, you speak with ministers and pastors and leaders, you know, and they're like, man, God, call me. Man, why am I going through all this? Well, the call of God doesn't mean that it's going to be an easy call. We got to persevere. Uh, we, we understand that there, there are hardships. In fact, when you, you look at the life of Paul and Barnabas, you know, the Bible tells us, and it's clear that they had hardships. They had hard times. They suffered famine. They suffered persecution. They suffered internal struggles. In fact, in Acts chapter 15, it says that they had a sharp disagreement and they had to go their separate ways. And Paul, and Paul had four missionary trips, but Barnabas was only with him for the first one. Why? Because we understand that the call of God, it doesn't always come easy. But that doesn't mean that God hasn't called us. The call comes from God. This should shake, shake us to our core. When I think that the Lord has called Pastor Becky and I, to pastor this wonderful church, it shakes us to our call, it brings us to our knees, and it reminds us that without him we could never do this. It, it shakes us to our call, it brings us to the reality that we don't deserve it, but we respond in obedience. Why? Because it comes from the Lord. Our prayer always is, Lord, let not my will be done, but your will be done. It's wonderful to think and to know that, that uh, although we don't understand it, God understands it. And he has positioned us. So today, you're here. To the church that's here, I want to remind you that God has a heavenly call upon your life. I want to encourage you to embrace it. Encourage you to believe it. And encourage you to live it. And you may feel like, uh, I'm not good enough. Pastor Carlos, you don't know me. You don't know the things I've done. You don't know how I have failed God, how I have failed my family, how I have failed uh, my community. Like I said before, we're all beggars that have found bread. And God knows our hearts, and he has intentionally saved you. And because he has intentionally saved you, his saving grace qualifies you for this great call. You may feel like, oh, I'm not good enough. You're exactly the person that God wants to use. When we realize that we cannot, God says, good. Now you can. When you realize that you're not good enough, God says, yep, I can absolutely use you. I'm going to give you the victory. And maybe you feel like you felt God. God says, I'm restoring you. And I'm placing you in a place of worthiness for the call. I love it when God calls Jeremiah. Jeremiah says, I'm... I'm too young for this. 
I'm too young for this. And then the Lord speaks to him and says, do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. Right? This sense of frailty when the Lord calls us should be a part of each and every one of us. I just can't do this, God. Uh, This is too much for me. And God says, yeah, that's good, but, but I'm going with you. I love the words of the, of the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 26, verses that have marked our lives. It says, brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts boast in the Lord. If God is using you, it's probably because you are real weak and vulnerable. And God says, this is a vessel that I can use. And when I use him, he's going to recognize that all the glory is mine. When I use her, she's going to recognize that all the glory is mine. (laughs) Hallelujah, hallelujah. Be encouraged. Because sometimes we let our insecurities and our past failures and our doubt in ourselves impede what God wants to do in us. But you are the perfect vessel for God to be glorified, for God to be glorified. Be encouraged. It's God who calls us. And the church says, so we're talking about a heavenly call. The call comes from God. Number two, God calls us. God calls us because of need. The call of God upon our life is because of of need. Paul and Barnabas were being sent to the apostles to the Gentiles. Paul and Barnabas were being sent as apostles to the Gentiles. It would be the first time that intentionally spirit-filled missionaries would be going out to preach and teach to the Gentiles about Jesus. God called them because there was a need. God calls us because of need. And the church says, Bethany and Marilyn, I want to let you know today that God calls you because of need. Marilyn, you have responded to the need of the church throughout the years, and you have done it honorably. And today is an affirmation of the call of God upon your life. But to Lee, it is said that in churches, the young adult community is a forgotten community. It is said about the young adult community that little attention has been given to them. Today, you're called to this community because of a need. God's greatest A passion is for his people, is for his people. And our call is based on the need. Um, There's there's no one, God's desire is that no one would be lost, right? 2 Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. That's the heart of God. And each and every one of us, We're called as ambassadors of Christ into this ministry of reconciliation, drawing people to God, right? Uh, Paul writes to Timothy, and he tells him in 1 Timothy 2, 4, who wants all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. This is the call, thank you. This is the call of God upon our lives. When God calls, he only calls because of need. God calls up, the God's call upon our life is because there's a need. There's a need of a broken and lost uh, the, a community. Humanity is lost without Jesus. And who does God use to reach um, the community, humanity, the lost? He uses the church. He uses you. He uses me. God operates through the church, through the people, through us. Uh, there are a few verses that remind us of this. Romans chapter 10, verse 14 says, and how can they hear without someone preaching to them? It's a reminder to us that if we're called to preach, is because of a need. Ephesians 3.10, uh, Paul writes to the church and tells, his intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God will be made known. It is through the church where the message of Christ is shared. Jesus, speaking of disciples, he tells them, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. We have this ministry. We have this heavenly call. And it's based upon need. God calls us not because we're special, but because of the need. If if you have a passion for something, it's because there's a need there. 
If the Lord is dealing with you, maybe you have a passion to see whole families come to Jesus. Your, your ministry is to see a families come to Jesus, then you're called to minister to families. If it's for men, you're called to minister for men. If, if, if you're here and you see some disorganization and you're like, man, that needs to be a little sharper, you're called to be in, to, in the usher ministry, right? If you have a passion for missions, then, then you're called into the, into the ministry of missions. If, if you love to study, you feel called into the teaching ministry, right? But every call is based upon need. It's not about our gifting. It's not about how good we are. It's not about what platform we stand on. It's not about what influence we have been given. It's not about any of those things. A, a heavenly call upon our life is because there's a need. And when we look at every call, when we look at the call of Moses from the burning bush, God calls him and says, I'm calling you to liberate the Israelites. Need. And if we evaluate every call is based on the need that was found in the heart of God. And the church responds to that need. So if you're here today and, and you feel the tugging in your heart to serve in the kingdom of God, know that it's for the glory of the Father and the blessing of the church. Everything that gives the Father glory trickles down and blesses the church and blesses your life. God's call upon your life is based on need. And the church says, Amen. so we're talking about a heavenly call. The call comes from God. God calls us because of need number three. The call of God uh, is confirmed by the church. God's call is confirmed by the church. I love that Paul and Barnabas are sent out to the church leaders. Uh, and it says in verse 3, so after they had sent out by the church leaders, in verse 3, so after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. Even though the Holy Spirit has spoken, a moment came oh, when the church leaders prayed for them and sent them into ministry, sent them into the work. It's a reminder to us that the church confirms, ratifies the call on one's life. It's a reminder to us that we're not long rangers. Everybody needs mentorship. Everybody needs accountability. We all, uh, we all have people in our lives that we are accountable to. Accountable to. Everybody needs. Why? Because the church affirms the call. I, I love uh, uh, 2 of Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. Paul reminds Timothy of this. He says, for this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying of my hands. And when you read uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14, it's a confirmation of the ordination service of Timothy, where he says, do not neglect your gift, which was given you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. It's a reminder to us that the call of God is confirmed by the church. Paul is reminding Timothy the day that the leaders put their hands on them and prayed over them and anointed them, sent them off into ministry. It was a day when the church affirmed the call of God upon his life. I want to remind you today that the church affirms the call. When we look at scripture, we can see that. But I love the model that churches elect their pastors. I don't believe that pastors should, I don't believe that churches should be inherited. Um, and others may do it that way, and that's fine. I'm just, uh, I, I believe that the church should, the, the membership, the community should elect the pastor because you affirm the call of the pastor. And then the pastor affirms the call of the leaders by praying for them and sending them off, right? And ministry leaders, when you talk to Renee, our men's minister, and, and Sylvia, leading our women's minister, right? They, they affirm the call upon the men and the women in their lives. And, and, and Pastor Adis affirms the call on the children of their life. And Rick and Amanda affirming the call of the young people in their ministry. Why? Because leaders affirm the call of other leaders. In fact, we see the church community should push the leaders, should push those who are called to the top. When we look at Acts chapter 6 and we see that there was a need to serve the widows, uh, what do the apostles say? Pick among yourselves men full of wisdom and the power of God, the spirit of God. Why? The people push the leaders up to lead them and serve. Why? There is a ratification of the call of God that comes from the church itself. And we're reminded of this and I also love the idea that family affirms the call. I love to look at my daughters, and Pastor Becky and I, we look at them not as their pastors, but as their mom and their dad. And we say, Eden, God's got a call for you. And we say, Rachie, God's got a call for you. 
And we say, Emma, God's got a call for you. And we want to encourage every mother and every father to affirm the call of your children. You're the greatest influence upon their lives. You let them know that God has a purpose for them. And God is going to use them with, with might and power for his glory and for the blessing of the church. <laughs> Hallelujah. And husbands, you affirm the call upon your wives. And you look at your wife and you say, I see Jesus in you. And wives, look at your husband and say, Hi, I see Jesus in you. You affirm the call upon those that are around you. And that is the job of the church. Betsy in Maryland, Pastor Becky and I have prayed about this day. We have presented it to the pastors of our church, to the church board and trustees. And everyone supports your ministry. And as a church body, as church leadership, we all today have affirmed the call upon your lives. And maybe you're here today and you feel that there's a struggle within your own heart. God is impressing something within you. I want to encourage you to stay connected to the church. Stay connected to the church. Get engaged. At whatever level you have that opportunity, get engaged because your call will be affirmed in the church. If you lay in your bed and you say, God, I'm available to you. Here I am. Use me. Well, well God will continue to, to, to tug on your heart. But it's not until you engage in the ministry, into the work where your church, where your, your call is affirmed through the body, through the church of Christ. And the church says, Amen. there are many that feel called and they sit and they wait. Maybe we don't want to take a secondary role, what we see as a secondary role. And maybe we're waiting for this, but I want to let you know that as you serve, the church itself will push you to the top. The church itself will push you to the top. And the church says. Amen. So we're talking about a heavenly call. The call comes from God. God calls us because of need. God's call is ratified by the church. The last one is God's call demands faith and obedience. So after they have fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. Paul and Barnabas didn't know what to expect. Not sure how they would live. What would be the result Oh, they didn't know what to expect, what would come of them, uh, how would they live. They, they weren't sure. One thing they knew, that God had called them and that they had responded in faith and obedience to the call. The concept of God's call demands faith and demands obedience. If God is calling us and he's leading us, it demands faith and it demands obedience. We see this in every call when you look at the life of Abraham in Acts chapter 12, uh, verses 1 through 4. God called Abraham to leave his homeland and go to a place uh, that he would not know that God would show him. And Abraham, Abraham responds in faith and obedience. And the Lord blesses him and every generation after him. We see this in the life of Moses in Acts chapter 3, in Exodus chapter 3 and chapter 4. God calls him to leave the Israelites out of Egypt into the desert 40 years. And despite Moses' initial reluctancy, he ultimately obeyed God, uh, demonstrating faith and obedience. God's call upon your life will demand faith and obedience. It, it's, it's, scary at time, it's scary at times, absolutely, but it demands faith and obedience. I remember when Becky and I first started 16 years ago, you know what I used to think? I said, oh, my God. I wonder how the church is going to be two years after we start pastoring. And I used to think, oh, my God, are the people going to leave? And that, 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 that was just like evil thought that you said, just, God, are the people going to leave? Are the people going to leave? Right? We understand, but it, it demands faith and obedience. Fear is a natural feeling when God calls. It's a natural feeling to feel, to feel afraid when God calls. It's a natural feeling. In fact, fear is part of the sinful nature. It, it's, it, it always, it's always there. And it wants to take its place. We don't function in fear, but that don't mean we don't deal with the temptation of fear. We feel the emotion of fear. Right? Trust me, even right before I got up, I said, Becky, pray for me. I feel a little nervous today. I feel a little fearful today. But I didn't stay there. Right? We're not going to function in fear. Right? But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It's part of who we are. It's part of the sinful nature. But it doesn't take authority over us, and it's not our decision maker. We trust God for what he has called us to do because it's a life of faith and obedience. And I want to encourage you today because some things will, will be stirred up in your heart, and, and fear will, will want to take its place. 
But you don't function in fear. You don't function in fear. Uh, Bethany in Maryland, today I just want to remind you that the Lord has called you. And he's called you into faith and obedience. And yeah, there, there are some times where you're like, Lord, are, am I really called for this? But you stay faithful to the church. The word over your life needs to be a word of response. Yeah, Lord, if you call me, I'm going to do it. If you call me, I'm going to do it. I may, I may do it reluctantly. I may do it a little fearful. But, but Lord, because you call me, I'm going to do it. We all deal with fears. We deal with feel, fears of failure. Oh, my God. What if I preach and I bomb? I, I know what that is. I bombed in sermons. Oh, it's the worst feeling in the world. <laughs> Anybody who has bombed in a Sunday sermon, you know is the worst feeling in the world. It's like, Lord, would the rapture happen right now? I don't want to look at nobody. I don't want to see nobody. Would you just take me into the clouds? <laughs> Fear of failure. We all deal with them. Yeah. Fear of rejection. You know, I got this title now. Are the people going to embrace? Or are they going to reject? People are going to believe in the vision or are they going to reject, push back? We all deal with fears, right? Fear of conflict. Oh, you know, um, how do I handle these hard conversations? I tell everybody, we shouldn't be afraid of hard conversations. We shouldn't love them. If you love hard conversations, then you're probably not right for conflict management. Because that means you're loving conflict. But if you're not afraid to say, hey, well, let's just sit down and, and let's just handle it. Let's talk. Well, that's good, right? But some people fear of conflict, fear of making mistakes. And we're like, what do you think? You do it. Because we're afraid to make that decision. But we know that mistakes are part of ministry, a part of life. We learn through them. We grow through them. Uh, we understand that God glorifies himself through mistakes. It's an opportunity for us to humble ourselves and say, man, we blew it. We didn't do a good job. But next time we'll do a better job. We understand that. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be destructive. In fact, it can be something that, that, that grows our leadership to the next level. So we all deal with fears, but I want to remind you today that although fear is part of who we are, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says, God gave us, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. Right? So although fear exists in us, it exists. It's part of our sinful nature. You're not going to be able to shake it. In challenging times, you will feel afraid, but you don't function in, in fear. You function in power. Power is what? The ability to do what I cannot do. In other words, what I cannot do, the spirit of God in me will give me the strength to do what I cannot do. Right? It's the spirit of love. Love there has to do with motive. What is my motive to preach this sermon? What is my motive to pass to the church? What is my motive to teach or preach? What is my motive to leave? The spirit of God, it gives me power, also guards my motive. What comes from the spirit of God Guards my motive, and then a sound mind, count the cost, use wisdom, spiritual wisdom, understanding, insight. Let the Spirit of God give you discernment to see what you cannot see. So in the midst of fear trying to take his place, we don't function in fear, but we function in the Spirit of God that gives us power, that guards our motives, and gives us spiritual wisdom. And there we find success in ministry. And the church says... So we're talking about embracing this heavenly call. Our faith is in God. We just walk in obedience. It is his battle. It's his call. It's his people. It's his mission. Uh, it all belongs to him. Our job is faith and obedience. And the church says, Amen. with the help of the mus musicians as I close up our, our reflection this morning, it's a heavenly call. As we see in, in Acts chapter 13, verses 1 through 3, and we see here Barnabas and, and Saul, Paul being sent out, we're reminded that the call comes from God. You feel God tugging at your heart? You feel God dealing with you and speaking to you? Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Animate. Be encouraged. The Lord is calling you to a heavenly call. And, and, and it should be something that should be taken seriously.
Yes, and it's a special call to be his ambassadors. And among, among being his ambassador, he gives us different assignments and different seasons of our lives. Would you embrace the call that comes from God? Number two, God calls you not because we're special. It has to do with his grace and his purpose. He calls us because of need. It's because he uses the church to reach the lost. He uses the church uh, to fulfill the great commission. He uses the church to reflect the image of Jesus. He calls us because of need. And God's call is confirmed by the church. No one should be a long ranger. We do this together. There is hierarchy. There's, there's, there, there is a, there's a, a pattern. There is a model. And, and it doesn't have to do with one having more authority than the other. We are all on the same plane, but, but we all have different assignments. And together, we do what the Lord has called us to do. And this call demands faith and obedience. Trust God for the unknown. And sometimes, and the Lord has taught me this recently, sometimes we think that we're making great sacrifices for the kingdom. Sometimes, you know, I need to close, but at times I would hold tight to in our own, in our own testimony of maybe some sacrifices we made when we became full-time. And the Lord has spoken into my heart and said, you made no sacrifice. On the contrary, uh, you've lived a, a better life than before. I want to let you know that if God is calling, in, calling you, he's calling you to a life of faith. And it may seem that we're making sacrifices for God. But when you put it all at the feet of Jesus, his blessings go far beyond any sacrifice that we think we're making. Far beyond any sacrifice that we think we're making. I'll close with this. I've, I've said this before. A couple of years into, into our pastoral, we had a, a challenging time. I won't say the whole story again, but... Um, where we needed, I needed to see God move in a mighty way for particular needs. And we saw the hand of God in a beautiful way. And as I prayed and weep, a prayer of gratitude unto the Lord, the Lord put in my heart, Carlos, your job is faithfulness, and my job is to supply. Your job is faithfulness, and my job is to supply. And we've seen God supply friends, and mentors, and workers, and partners, finances. We've seen God supply. So today, I just want to encourage you, embrace this heavenly call. And the church says, amen. amen. Would you stand with me today? Perhaps you are here and you're far from God, and the Lord is speaking to you. Today is a day of salvation. Today is a day of reconciliation. Today is a day when you come before the Lord and you say, here I am, God. Send me. Send me. If you are far from God today and you feel like, I, I need to get right with God. In, in a moment, our worship team is going to lead us in worship. And this altar is going to be open. And I want to encourage you to come to the altar. And those that come pray with you, just say this. I need to get closer to God. And they'll know that you're looking for a prayer of faith, a prayer of reconciliation. And they will, they will walk with you in that first prayer. And then, and then we want to help you in your next steps as well. But if you're here today and you feel like, man, I'm far from God. And God is tugging at my heart and he's letting me know that he has a, a divine purpose with me. Today is a day of salvation. Don't worry to make changes. You couldn't do them on your own anyway. When you come to Christ, come just the way that you are. Don't worry, I got to stop this, I got to stop. No, you don't got to stop anything. Come to Jesus, surrender it all, and let his power work in your life. Let his power work in your life. And to the church, that if you feel that God has spoken to you in a, in a special way and you would like a prayer to help commit to the word in your life today, the altar is also open for you this morning. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray, Lord God, that your word would continue to resonate with us as we draw closer to you. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. As we sing this song, the altar is open. If you feel like you're far from God, 
today is the day of salvation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of every praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say.
Hallelujah. 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 Natalie gave her heart to Jesus today. Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord a hand clap? God bless you, Natalie. Continue forward in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're if you're visiting our church and you've never received a gift from our church today, our Connect pastors want to meet with you right after church. They're right here to my right, Pastor Robert, Pastor Rosa. If you're visiting our church today, new to our church, like to know a little bit more, we'd love for you to meet them right there at the end of the service. They're going to lead you into um, our visitor's lounge, and we have something for you there. Any questions that you may have, we'd love to answer them. And Pastor Robert and Pastor Rosa, they're amazing. I know that you're going to have a wonderful time connecting with them. And we're so happy that you were here today with us as well. I also want to shout out uh, Pastor Jose and Pastor Myra who are with us. They are Elohimers. Um, so happy after I preached, I realized I didn't shout them out. Uh, I know that they're not looking for it, but they were young adult leaders in our church. And um, the Lord called them into full-time ministry. And they were Pastor Dan in uh, Assembly Huntington Assembly uh, in Long Island, Suffolk County, and they're doing an amazing job over there. And, um, but um, once an Elohim, we're always an Elohim. Right? We celebrate with each other, and uh, we're family, and we honor their ministry. And we're so happy that they're here with us uh, today. They one time led the young adult ministry as young adult leaders, um, and they're dear friends with Betsy Lee, so they're, they're here honoring uh, her, her leadership as well. So I'm going to invite you all to sit down. I'm going to move this back. I'm going to ask all our associate pastors if you would quickly come forward and divide yourself evenly on these two sides. Our associate pastors, my mother-in-law, Jose and Myra, I would love for you to join us as well. Pastor Jose, Pastor Myra, join us as well here today. Would somebody help my mother-in-law? Yep, thank you. If you're new to our church, uh, these are all our associate pastors, um, and we're thankful for them. The role of the associate pastor within the church is as essential as the senior pastor position. Um, without them, ministry doesn't function the same, but they have embraced their call and their gift to Pastor Becky and myself, and we could not do this without them. And uh, we were associate pastors for 11 years before we became senior pastors, so we love the associate pastor position. We see the value uh, in what it is pastoring um, people uh, in different levels, so, so we're thankful. We're thankful for this wonderful team that has uh, joined us here today. So today, our church... We'll add a young adult pastor to the pastoral team. And reaffirm and anoint a longtime church leader into the office of pastoral ministry. Marilyn Custodio Miranda, would you please stand? <laughs> Marilyn, our church has seen your faithful work unto God and his kingdom over the last two decades as a leader of the church. You have shown yourself dedicated to the service of the Lord and have fulfilled all the qualifications found in scripture for a pastor. So today, Pastor Becky and I, along with the support of our church board and the church, want to affirm that call by celebrating this ministerial ceremony, knowing that God does not call just one member of the matrimony into ministry. Today, you are invited also to share in the anointing experience and are invited to officially join the ECC pastoral team, along with your husband, Pastor Anthony Miranda. Yeah. 
Will you join us here on the altar? Betsy Colon, would you please stand? <laughs> the Lord, through the church, has called you into the pastoral ministry. Through the years, we have seen your love for God and for his people. We have observed how you have cared for all that was entrusted to you and how you have served with excellence. With the support of the church board, today Pastor Becky and I recognize God's call upon your life. And today we want to anoint you to serve in the church as the young adult pastor. Will you join us on the altar? We enter into the ceremony today, Sunday, April the 14th, 2024, with the affirmation of the Holy Spirit, the support of your family, and the backing of your pastors and the church board. And with the love of the church membership, today we prepare to commission and affirm you into said ministry. Marilyn Custodio Miranda, Betsy Colon, today I share with you the words of the Apostle Paul in 1st Timothy chapter 4 verses 13 and on until I come devote yourself to the public reading of scripture to preaching and to teaching do not neglect your gift which was given you through the prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you be diligent in these matters give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress watch your life and doctrine closely. Preserve in them. If you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you a number of questions. If you can please respond with a bold yes. Do you accept this call to pastoral ministry as a call from the Lord? Do you promise to devote yourself to the study of Scripture? to give careful attention to the word of God, to apply it to your personal life and to the work of ministry? Do you promise to serve in his calling to the best of your ability by God's grace and enablement of the Holy Spirit? Do you promise to maintain, preach, and teach the whole counsel of God? Do you promise to give careful attention to your life and witness being subject in your ministry to this congregation, faithful to the vision of the church and the church's constitution. Betsy Colon and Marilyn Custodio Miranda, on behalf of this congregation and the church leadership, and in response to the confession and promise which you have made in the presence of God and these witnesses on this day, April 14th, 2024, I, Reverend Carlos Medina, Dina, Senior Pastor of Elohim Christian Church, along with my wife, Pastor Rebecca Medina, and the backing of the church board, appoint you into said ministry in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the church says... God who has called you into this ministry, anoint you with the Holy Spirit, give you grace and give you wisdom yes. and bless you in all things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'm going to invite you to kneel down at your chairs. I'm going to invite our pastors to come and with the anointing oil to begin to anoint them with oil, a prayer over their life, anointing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 
Pastors begin to gather around them. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Church, would you extend your hands? Would you extend your hands towards them? Would you begin to pray a prayer of faith over their lives? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. May the anointing of the Holy Spirit never lack upon your life. Hallelujah. May the anointing of the Holy Spirit never lack upon your life. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. May the anointing of the Holy Spirit never lack upon your life. May the counsel of your word, of the word, never lack upon your life. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 thank you Lord, thank you Lord, hallelujah, thank you Holy Spirit for your affirmation in this place, hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you Lord, hallelujah, 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 and the church says, amen, amen, hallelujah, thank you Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor Marilyn Custodio Miranda, on behalf of our church, we have your um, IDs, your credentials as local church pastors. We have a gift also in minister's manual with your name on it. So grateful for your life and ministry. We love you. Hallelujah. Pastor Betsy Colong as well. We have your um, identification as a credentialed minister of Elohim Christian Church, credentialed pastor of our church along with the minister's manual for you. God bless you. So proud of you. So proud of you. I'm going to ask that Marilyn and, and Betts, if you would uh, share, share a few words with us as we get ready to close our service. I'll let you all may be seated. Pastors, if you'd like, you may be seated as well. Tony, you can stay here with Marilyn. Hallelujah. So you can walk down with her.
God bless you, church. Today, above all, I thank God for this honor to serve. I stand before you with a humble heart and thankful, with thankful spirit, and I'm honored to accept the role as associate pastor of standing side by side. My husband, Pastor Tony Aranda, and joining the ECC pastoral staff. I have for years, and I can tell you the day, the time the Lord spoke to me. It was, <clears throat> it was in Mahanaim. It was about 1977. And as the woman that was giving us the conference, we were in separate groups. As she talked about Noah, I heard her call my name. I was running. I never wanted this position. I didn't want this title. But I remember after the conference, we were at the service, and she said, the Lord called you. Said, you have to stand. I fought it. I fought it, and I, and I stayed sitting there. And I remember when I stood up, I said, okay, Lord, I surrender. I give it to you. I give it all to you. But this little title I don't want. And like I said, I ran for many, many years. And I, and, but I served. I said, Lord, I will serve in any capacity, anything that comes. Things that I didn't even think I was interested, I did it because I said yes. And I said, I surrender to you. And today I affirm my commitment to the call. And I thank God for, because I was raised in a home where when you're a pastor's kid and everything, you know, you go through a lot of church hurt and all that. I said, I don't want that. I don't want that. I want it to be different. But the Lord was always tugging me and pulling me back. I said, why can't, I, why can't it be, why can't it be just like, no, he always pulled me back. And the Lord continued to speak to me. I, and he spoke to me the day he called me. And, and I knew that I was going to have problems and I'm going to face situations that were hard. And Ian, it may sound like, why would God tell you that? But I felt that something was going to happen even within my marriage. But he was with me throughout the storm. And I say this because when you feel the call, don't run. Don't look the other way. Say, yes, Lord. Like Pastor said, we're just vessels. What do I know? Why do you select me? But that heart, your heart, giving your heart to the Lord and loving his, his ways, his works, his people will never go away. So I said, all right, Lord. And I remember when, I, when Tony, he, he said, oh, you don't have to worry about me. I don't, I don't want to be a pastor. I'm not going to be a pastor because I said, I don't want to be a pastoral staff. But you know what? I have to. For years, I've been asking God for forgiveness. And I said, Lord, I accepted the call. I always had something, but I said yes to you and to God be the glory. And don't say no to the Lord. The blessings are all there. God bless you all. God bless you all. Um, I am humbled and I'm honored by this opportunity to continue to serve my church alongside visionary, wise, and supportive senior pastors, a dedicated board of deacons and trustees, hardworking pastoral staff and leaders, and servant-hearted members of this community, all of whom, with God's help, make ECC what it is. A place where people, although we're imperfect, strive to love well, serve well, and bring honor to God. Paramount to me now is the opportunity to continue to serve the community of young adults who the Lord has drawn and will continue to draw to this place. For some time now, God has moved the heart of the church to the importance of seeing and investing into this demographic in the church. Our church responded to the need seven years ago when the YA ministry launched as a unique community within ECC. 
We have um, pastors uh, Myra and Jose here who um, helped launch that ministry. Sometime later, pastors Minor and Jesenia uh, led the ministry as well. And now I have this honor. Today, we see a continued commitment to the ministry. I stand here, but I can tell you that this moment is not about me. This moment is about God, by whose immense grace, mercy, and providence, I get to journey with an amazing group of young adults. The young adults here are as diverse as they come. We have young adults who were practically born in the church, right? Um, some of us are a little newer to their church, and we're, uh, we're on the same journey. We have seasoned believers, and we have what I love to call baby Christians. We have students uh, still in school. We have folks still trying to figure out what they want to do with their lives. And we have others who are well-established in their careers. And we have everything. We have plumbers. We have people who work in finance. We have um, people in the medical field, in the legal field, education, and beyond. You name it, we have it here. We have folks who are single as a Pringle, and they're okay with it, and that's okay. <laughs> We have folks who are single and looking and dating, and we have folks who are married as well within our community. We have young adults from all walks of life with varied experiences, but united under the banner of Christ. And there is the beauty. We may be, or we may be unique in our experiences, but we unite in faith. If you're between the ages of just 18 and 35, just quickly wave at me. 18 to 35, look around, look around, 18 to 35, right? Hey, hey yeah. <laughs> These are the young adults of ECC. This is the community that we have here at ECC. There is a place for you here. I say this again. I get to journey with you, young adults. And it is a privilege. I am not perfect at all. But if you would allow me, I'll walk with you. I'll sit in those deep valleys with you. And I'll celebrate at the mountaintops with you as well. You are seen and valued. You have a purpose. And I can't wait to see how this community continues to grow. God will receive the glory. And we will enjoy the blessings of this. I would be, <laughs> I would be entirely remiss if I didn't take a moment to recognize the goodness of God in providing me with inc an incredibly supportive family who's sitting right there this morning. And friends, right? Friends all around, all around, all around. <laughs> who are, are as supportive and as loving and see me for who I am. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for encouraging me. Thank you for seeing me in, in all areas of my life and still saying, Bets, you can do it. Move on. You can do it with God's help. I'll end with this. I've loved the Lord from a very young age was very little. My mom used to send me to church at the time. She was not congregating, but she took the four of us and she would put us on the church bus and we'd go to church. <laughs> we'd go to Sunday school and we'd go to Thursday services. There was a, a culto de niños on Thursdays and we'd go to church soon after she then came to faith as well. So I've loved the Lord from a very young age, even when I didn't understand what that meant. I was little, six, seven years old. But I was drawn to the Lord. He drew me to himself from a very young age. Before coming to Elohim, I had only been a member of one church. Um, I was there my whole life. There I grew in faith and in service. And seven years ago, I walked into Elohim. Seven years ago. Just this month, uh, seven years ago this month, I became a member at Elohim. And I was broken and I needed rest. Never in a million years did I think that I would be in Richmond Hill, Queens, Elohim Christian Church. Born and raised in Connecticut, never really venturing this way. 
But I know that God knew. I know that God had a purpose and all. And things may not look like I thought they would, but I understand that I'm called to obedience. Not just in the easy things that I love or where I think my gifting is easy or it's fun to do. But in the hard things where I have to completely depend on the Lord. And I'm thankful to be here. To the young adults, again, I am extremely honored to walk with you. I truly believe that the young adults here at Elohim and the young adults who will continue to join are the church. You are the preachers and the teachers and the missionaries and the people who love and serve and the ones who will make a difference and a change in this community, in your families, in your jobs, in your schools. I truly believe that. And I pray that the Lord would help us continue to cultivate that in every single one of you. I leave you with two verses that are dear to my heart. Psalm 73, verses 25 to 26. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there's nothing on earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail. But God, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. And now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory and with great joy. So the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now and forever. Amen. We are truly overjoyed of what God is doing, has done, and shall continue to do. To Marilyn, I say, on behalf of all moms whose girls have gone through her hands and the hands of girls' ministry, I just want to say thank you. Eden, Rachel, Emma, along with all the young girls, all the moms here, we say thank you for always being a pastor to them. And doing the pastor work, we know a little bit of her testimony, but she has always done a pastor work. And for us, it's great joy to affirm that call upon her life and just to say yes. Although you said one thing, but your action said something else because you always pastored. How many say amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we love her dearly and Pastor Tony and their family. And Betsy, who is just a treasure. Just, I, I don't have words. She's like a daughter. She's a treasure. We love her dearly. And Betsy has given the Lord her best yes. And I'm believing God to continue to use her in a mighty way to bless her life. I thank her family. I love you all. I love you all because I love Betsy. We love you. We love Betsy. And I know that the Lord is going to continue to do great things. She is a beautiful, beautiful, precious treasure of a young woman. And we pray for her and we love her dearly. And um, I just i am so happy in this day. And I love you all. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you guys. You may be seated as we get ready to close. Church, would you stand? Hallelujah. It's, it's a little late, but I, I need to run through this really quick. Just a quick announcement. They're real important, a few of them. Um, remember the Financial um, Peace University class? It begins Sunday the 28th. You need to register. It's $99. If you're having a hard time with past debt, you want to come here. If you want to organize your present finances, you want to come here. If you want to plan financially for the future, you want to register for this class. I promise you it's going to be a blessing. We're hoping that at least 20, 20 families um, um, become a part of it. We already have a good group. So we just want you to know that you need to register. It's $99. You need to make a $99 investment. I promise you the families of our church that have gone through this financial program, they have all been encouraged by it. Uh, so if that's you, um, be a part of it in the foyer. You can get more information. Next Saturday here we have the Women's Trimestral. It's our sectional service. And this is a special service because... Sylvia is going to be presented to the section as the sectional president of our women's ministry. 
So be here to be a part uh, of that ceremony, that recognition. But our women's director, um, uh, Miriam Maria, she's going to be preaching. She is an incredible preacher. She is going to bless us. It is a service for women's ministry, but anybody can come. It will be a Spanish service, but I want to encourage you to be a part of it. If you have it Saturday night right here, it's going to be a blessing. And the last thing. So I want to share something with you. In our church, we have been praying not just for a giving culture, but a sending culture. Because it's easy to give. You know, it's easy to give. Hey, somebody's going, give. You know, here, here you are. It's easy to give. Thank God. Uh, many of us are blessed to give for somebody to do a good work. Our church is so blessed. Our missions offerings go up year after year. You are a giving church, and we're so grateful to the Lord for that. But the Lord is transitioning our mission work, not just to be a giving church. But Pastor Becky and I have been praying about being a sending church. How awesome would it be that the Lord from this house sends out missionaries. I'm talking about boots on missionaries finding themselves in communities that people don't even know the name of Jesus. And we're so excited about the Sons of God uh, missionaries that are, are in these different places. And one of our own is going to be sent out into a mission work. Jonathan Munoz. <laughs> and we always said, if one of ours is going to the mission work, they will never lack. How many say amen? amen. They will never lack. Jonathan is going to be leaving May 29th for six weeks, and he's going to be heading out to North Africa. I cannot tell you the city because of the sensitivity of that area, but he's going to be going out to North Africa. He's going to be joining other Assemblies of God world missionaries in that place, and he's going to go with a team of young people, and they're going to serve there for six weeks. How awesome is that? Yeah, right? Tuesday night, our prayer service, we're going to dedicate that service to missions. Jonathan is going to come. He's going to speak. He's going to encourage us. He's going to tell us a little bit about his mission work. And then we're going to come and we're going to collect an offering to send him. How many know that we're going to send our missionaries? <laughs> Hallelujah. Our missionaries will not lack anything. In fact, they will live better than what we live here. Right? He needs to raise $3,400 for six weeks. And that includes a hotel, flight, food, everything. We are committed to raise more than half of that money Tuesday night. Would you come Tuesday night? Would you come for our prayer service? Would you come to hear Jonathan encourage us with the word? Would you come to hear Jonathan share what he's going to do? And would you come with a special missions offering? And 100% of that offering is going to go completely to Jonathan. And we're going to send one of ours to North Africa on May 29th. And the church says, <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. We're praying, Lord, would you build a sending culture here at ECC? And the church says, Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this wonderful morning that we have had, where you have spoken into our lives, you have encouraged us, you have led us, Lord. Uh, what a wonderful time in worship, Lord, a time to give. And thank you, Lord, for your word. And thank you for the celebration of, of, of Marilyn and Betsy Lee and, and the staff and the team. We're, we give you all the glory and all the honor. We thank you for Natalie who gave her heart to you today, Lord. That she will know, Lord God, that you are leading her into a life, Lord God, with you. And her future days with you will be better than her past days without you, Lord. Father, we thank you for every visitor that was here, every guest that's here. And we pray blessings upon them this morning. And we thank you for your grace and your mercy. And we ask, Father, that you would dismiss us from this place with your blessing in Jesus' name. And the church says, Amen. God bless you, God keep you. Church, just a friendly reminder. In